Hola, ¿cómo están? Hola, hola. ¿Llamaste para los asaí? ¿Quieres que más asaí? Ya, dos asaí. ¿Quieres agua? Uh, no, yo tengo. Beautiful day out here. Gorgeous out here. Hey everybody, my name is Captain Mike and this is the Real Reports Dream Boat Build Series. I am super excited to be going back to Fort Myers today to really work on the boat this week. The boat before me, Captain David's, is pretty much done. So that means it's all hands on deck for my boat. And we're gonna be working on the rub rail as well as the center console. And then later in the week, we're gonna be mounting the motor. Once the motor's on there, it's pretty much, let's go. So I am super fired up. So we're gonna take you back to Fort Myers with us. But before we head up there, in the previous video, when we applied the non-skid to the boat, I gave you guys the chance to win this Real Report shirt all you had to do was tell me just how many bolts that Shane used when he attached the motor bracket to my boat. And the answer is 16 bolts. So the first person to get it right was Rover Republic. Go ahead and shoot me an email, Mike at realports.com. Let me know your shirt size as well as your address and we'll send you out a shirt immediately. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, guys. We're gonna be heading back to Fort Myers here. I stopped off here really quick just to have some breakfast. I'm super excited because we got the rub rail, we got the center console, we got the motor, we still got electronics to do, a bunch of other stuff, but we're getting real close. Honestly, I really wanted the boat for the springtime fishing, but with COVID and everything, there's no way that was gonna happen. However, the next biggest thing after the spring fishing in South Florida for me is the Florida mullet run. That happens every fall. We're just weeks away from September here when the mullet could be coming down our coast, the migration. So if I have the boat for that, especially the peak, I'm gonna be super happy. If not, if for some reason we don't, of course I'll be jumping on with Captain Tim, I'll be going to the beach and stuff like that. But I'm super excited because we are very, very close. So we're gonna take you back to the warehouse with us. We're gonna head right now to Fort Myers, Florida, and we're gonna work with Shane and Duper to get this boat done. Let's go ahead and do it.
smell the boat. We're back at the shop. Feels good. So this one right here is not mine, but how gorgeous is this? Haircut. Coming hot. Take your guy. Oh, looking good. What's going on in here? You guys are oh. packed in here. Yeah. Yo! I figured you cut your I hair. I'm like, yeah, we all right, guys. We're at the shop here in Fort Myers Latitude Boats. I got my console behind me. We're prepping it today to go into the boat. We're gonna fiberglass it in. I also got my leaning post that's already here. But before we jump into my boat and start working, I want to show you Captain David's boat because his is pretty much nearing completion. He's just waiting on his hard top. But you guys can see here, he's got the rub rail on. He's got his console in already. So we're gonna bounce between the boats because I'm only here for a couple hours, but I can show you kind of the finished product as well as kind of how it went into process over there. So let's go ahead and jump in David's boat right now because this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. Here's the rub rail that we're getting. All right, so I think we got to hop on right here. Is this pretty? Yeah. Yep. Right. Sorry, David. My shoes are a little dirty. All right, guys. So I'm on Captain David's boat here, and the first thing I notice when I jump on this boat is that there is just an absolute dance floor behind the console to the transom here. Just look at all this space. I mean, plenty of space here, do whatever you want. Now, granted, when we put in the leaning post here, we're gonna take away from that space, but still, you're gonna have a ton of space back here. Also, the gunnels are a little bit lower than I'm accustomed to, but I absolutely love that. That's probably the top two reasons that I decided to go with this boat. I love the low gunnels. Being able to throw a big cast net from back here, a 12, 14 footer, even a small cast net, it's gonna come in handy also when you're releasing a fish. A lot of advantages to have low gunnels, especially in the back of the boat here. All right, so here's David's bait well right here. This is the transom bait well. It's about 25, 30 gallons. Nice center of gravity here in the boat. Here we got the hatches with all the hardware. I like that they don't use the uh, piano wire type hatches over here. You guys can see the Matterhorn on top of the Whisper Gray. Nice combo. Matterhorn actually has a tint of gray to it, although it looks white. It is certainly a little bit darker than, than bright white. All right, so going up to the midship here. Got the fuel intake right there. We got a nice cleat. That center cleat right there is very important for me. Whenever I'm docking, it controls the boat very well. A little short rope to a piling, and you're in pretty good place, especially when you're all alone and not gonna be at a spot for a long time. And then there's the bait well, looking good. You guys can see just how deep the hatches are here. And then of course you got the forward fish box. On this particular boat, David had them foam the fish box as well. Gonna come in handy when we're doing snapper trips, mutton trips, vermilions. David's pretty dialed into the deep dropping, so gonna come in handy for him. Now one thing that this boat has that mine doesn't is this pitch well here. Very nice. Coming up, you guys can see how the non-skid was taped off in our last episode. You see just how nice that looks. Got the slicks and then you got the non-skid there in the Matterhorn. And then up front here, you got your anchor locker and you got a bow cleat. See how nice this door is right here. Nice quality door. 
can see you got your tube for all the rigging. A lot of space in there. Well, first I'm gonna go cut the flange off of it. Then I'll get it up here and I'll scribe it to the floor. And then after that, I will grind a relief all the way around the console and the liner exposing the raw fiberglass so we can actually glass the console to the floor. No and screws. Oh god no. Never. <laughs> never screw a console. If you can glass it, why screw it if you can glass it? Absolutely. We want it to be there forever. Alright guys, so here's the center console here. It came out of the mold, it was polished. Now they're just cutting it here and then they're gonna, you know, finish it off before it goes in the boat. But this is the flange that obviously isn't going in the boat, so he's just trimming that off right now with the grinder. All the way around here. And it just looks great. Perfect gel coat, whisper gray. So we're gonna have our our switch panel right here. We're gonna have I kind of went through it the other day. I have like 20 switches in my mind. Even things like stereo, I want to be able to turn on and off because those are things that drain your battery. So being able to control that is super nice. And of course we got three bait wells. We got a bunch of lights, all kinds of stuff that we got to put on switches. So I'm going to be working on that this week. Make sure I get that switch panel in here pretty soon. way it fits to the floor it is not an exact so I scribe it to the floor. Okay. So that basically just taking two pencils, tape them together and a piece of cardboard and I put the cardboard down and I drag the pencil around it and that basically makes the when I go to cut this it will be the exact how the floor because the floor is not perfectly flat because we want the water to drain off of it, uh, port the starboard, bow the stern. Sure. So it has a crown okay. to it, so the console won't just fit on there just right. So I have to trim it, and that's okay. how I get it to fit like a glove. Okay. And then then I go. All right, guys, last time we were in the shop here, we sh you saw that Shane sprayed the non-skid onto my cap as well as my deck. Well, the cap was separated from the boat, but today, it's sitting on top of the boat and they're gonna fasten it to the hull. So we're gonna see that process as they fasten it and then we're gonna start working on the rub rail. So before the rub rail goes on, they actually fasten this here. This is the third piece in the three piece construction. I'm always making such a big deal out of three piece construction because I feel it's so important to actually feel securely in the boat, be able to install rod holders properly with drains and uh, under, under gunnel lighting, all that good stuff. So they're gonna fasten this to the hole. 
get this on there nice and good and then we're gonna install the rubber rail. that the cap has the edge of it. That's what that is. And then all I do is, you know, I don't push it hard up against it like that. I'll actually step it down just a little bit. So, but if you're looking at it from the side there, kind of see what it does, how it meets. And then I just take the tip of my finger and I'll go all the way around it like that. And then we'll screw, do all the, every other screw hole. And then we'll come back, drill the other ones, then pull one screw at a time and put 52 on it and put it back in. It's a little repetitive, but that's the way we do it.